What's up guys? We are back with another educational video and this week we are talking about meat consumption and vegetable and fruit consumption. Now, what do I mean by this? We know there's a lot of research out there concluding that like processed meat and meat are associated with cancer incidents. Now, it's a much stronger effect for processed meat. The association of red meat with cancer is much less pronounced and, and some Systematic reviews, they don't find a statistically significant association of unprocessed red meat with cancer, and in some they do. And one of the problems with these correlation studies is because of their associative nature, people who eat more red meat, specifically a lot more processed meat, tend to just have overall unhealthier lifestyle habits. So people who tend to eat more processed meat or red meat also eat less fruits and vegetables, they tend to exercise less, there's a lot of co-founders that go into this. And so it's hard to pick apart one variable uh, and say, well, that's it. So in a new study that looked at a cohort from Alberta's Tomorrow Project, they examined the effects of stratified levels of red meat and processed meat intakes and stratified levels of vegetable and fruit consumption on the effects of all-cause cancers. They further delineated this into individual cancers as well, I'm not gonna to go too far into the weeds on that because the results were pretty similar across most cancers. Now, what they found was that as you increased uh, red meat intake, you did see a little bit of an increase in cancer risk, but it wasn't statistically significant. Processed meat did have a statistically significant uh, association with increased cancer rates. So there was a, uh, we call it a hazard ratio of like 1.8 six, I think, was some of the highest levels of processed meat intake. Now, they also compared this against low, medium, and high levels of fruit and vegetable intake. So low intakes of fruits and vegetables were defined as less than four servings per day, moderate was four to six, and high amounts were above six servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Now, what was really cool was you saw almost a linear drop in the risk of developing cancer as you increased uh, fruits and vegetables. And in the highest intake of red meat examined, when it was also paired with the highest intake of fruits and vegetables, it actually had a slightly lower hazard ratio than low intakes of red meat with low intakes of fruits and vegetables. Now, what does that actually mean? What it means is that it appears the effect of meat on cancer is mitigated quite a bit by fruits and vegetables, if not completely offset based on this data set. Now, again, it's just one study, so I don't want to go too crazy with it, but it shows that the effect of red meat on cancer may actually be more of an effect of a low fruit and vegetable intake in people who tend to eat high amounts of red meat. So what does that mean for you guys? If you're gonna eat a high red meat intake, it's probably fine as long as you're also eating a high amount of fruits and vegetables. And in fact, red meat, unprocessed red meat, may not even have an effect on cancer. It's just very hard to tease these things apart. Now, processed meat, even at high fruit and vegetable intakes, still had a higher risk of developing cancer. Does that mean that processed meat directly causes cancer? Maybe. There's a lot of data associating it with cancer, but again, it's really hard to pick apart overall lifestyle behaviors from individual ingredients or individual nutrients or individual foods. People who eat high amounts of processed meat also eat a lot more calories. They're eating things like hot dogs, bacon. Those tend to be much more calorically dense. They tend to eat way less fruits and veggies, although as we see, it didn't necessarily offset the risk. It did lower it um, compared to low intakes of fruits and vegetables. Is it an individual risk factor? Maybe. I'm sure there are people out there that would say, absolutely, yes, it's proven. I won't go that far, but I would say that if you want to mitigate your risk of cancer, I would try to limit your consumption of processed meats. Uh, as far as red meat goes or meat in general, there really isn't strong data, in my opinion, to show that that is a primary or isolated risk factor, especially when you now look at what happens when you actually have other healthy 
lifestyle behaviors. Again, this study highlights why it's important to look at overall eating patterns and not just try to pick out individual foods. Now I understand it. When I first was into biochemistry, I was very into like, let's pick out individual nutrients and see which ones are good, and which ones are bad. And unfortunately, it's a much more complicated conversation than that. You know, people ask me all the time about, for example, saturated fat. Saturated fat appears to be an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease. However, people who eat more saturated fat also tend to eat less polyunsaturated fats and lower percentage of monounsaturated fats, which may have cardioprotective effects. Uh, they also tend to eat less fiber, more overall calories. There's a lot of stuff that goes into this. For example, looking at someone's overall lifestyle and they're exercising every day, they uh, control their body weight, they eat enough fiber, they don't overeat calories, eating a well-balanced diet, but they have a little bit more saturated fat Am I necessarily worried about that, especially if all their blood markers look okay? Not really. I, I wouldn't really be worried about it, me personally. But if you're eating high saturated fat, low fiber, you're not exercising, you're drinking alcohol a lot, you're smoking, that, those are all part of an unhealthy lifestyle pattern. It's very hard to pick out individual things and say, well, this one thing is the cause of you know mortality in this group. It's difficult because we can't really do long-term randomized control trials on this stuff because you just only have a certain amount of time and we're talking about free living studies. It's hard to prove causality. The best we've got is these epidemiological studies that we do, you know, systematic reviews and meta-analyses on and we can come up with ideas as to what might be good or might be bad, but overall we need to look at healthy lifestyle behaviors. If I had to break it down for you guys, my top six is exercise and resistance train for sure. Don't eat like an a limit your stress, get enough sleep, don't smoke, and limit your alcohol consumption. If you do those things, you're probably getting 95% of stuff right. If you do those things and then you want to worry about processed meat and saturated fat and all those sorts of things, that's fine. Make sure you're taking care of the big stuff first. So guys, if you're interested in learning more about the study, I put the link in the description. You can click it, read it for yourself. You may disagree with my analysis. That's fine, no big deal. In general, it confirms what we already know. Fruits and vegetables are awesome. Sorry, carnivore people. If you're gonna eat a lot of meat, probably ought to eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Please click the links in the description where you can check out our educational materials, our new nutritional coaching app, as well as our upcoming supplement line, Outward Nutrition. Thanks, guys.